Hey everyone, welcome to Festive Fridays here. I'm Jess and uh, it's so good to see you all. Uh, we've got quite a bit of chatter going on in the chat. So let me just do a quick little shout out to everybody. Hi to Slivers and Book of Nerds and Yakmanda and whoever else is here just enjoying the tunage. Um, yeah, so that music was a collaboration of different video games um, covers from an artist named Glasses. He's a local artist here in Oregon and is a big video game nerd. So he did a lot of um, cover songs and actually made a full length album uh, covering all of these different video games. So you got like Zelda and Contra and Super Mario and so. I asked him if he would be cool with me playing this for um, my Twitch stream and he was like, yeah, totally. So um, if anyone is interested in his music and finding out more about him, it's uh, glassesmusic.com. Um, I will pop that into the chat if anyone wants to check him out. Um, he is a really, really cool guy. Uh, so I'm gonna do intro music. Intro music is glassesmusic.com there. So yeah, give him this, give him a support if you would like to. Uh, he has done a lot of, he's a keyboardist and so he does a lot of keyboard work um, and does a lot of cool effects and things like that. His YouTube channel is really cool. He's done a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, highly recommend. Anyway, hello everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be playing some stuff on Steam, some Uwe Rosenberg stuff. We've got Patchwork and we've got Cottage Garden to play through. So uh, this is going to be quite the chill stream, if you will. Um, these two games are fairly, fairly, fairly chill to um, be a part of. And so I'm glad you all are here. If you're just lurking too, uh, that's totally great. Um, this is probably probably one of the better streams where you can just kind of sit and listen to the tunes and um, have fun with that. So um, these are pretty straightforward games. They don't have a lot of um, kind of strategy. I'd like to use them as little intro games for people to play along. So let me open up the patchwork game here and let me know how you all checking on the audio and visuals here too because sometimes um, it might be a little bit too loud so we might need to have that um, be a factor to get sorted out so let's let's start that off and I will do a nice little screen share for it and here we go. So we've got our game here. Hey, Dutch, how's it going? And Raiders, oh my gosh. You all are just in time. Hello, hello. We are about to play some patchwork on Steam. Uh, yeah, thank you all for, for rating. Um, hello, 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 hello. My name's Jess. I am a part of Chicks King Game, and today we are going to be doing some Uwe Rosenberg games on Steam, starting off with some patchwork, and then we'll switch over to Cottage Garden. So. Hello, Bones John, uh, Dutch, thank you so much. And T, hello T. Um, and everyone, yeah, what were you all doing? What were you playing? Patchwork audio is a little high, cool. Thank you for that T. And let me see. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me check here. Oh, that's just if I can't, if I just cancel it out. Oh, bummer summer. Okay. 
Uh, does it sound any better now? Because I can always just adjust it on my end here. It is better. Cool. Okay. Can you still can you still hear it though? I want to make sure that you all can hear it because it is quite cute and whimsical and all that fun stuff. So, um, okay, awesome. Thank you all for that. Cool. So I'm gonna do a teach and I'm gonna be playing these two games for a few weeks to kind of have you all see how they work on Steam, but then also play the different levels of AI. So some games I might be winning and some games I might not be winning. So today I'm gonna be playing against Lula. She's an easy level. We've got Ute and then Uve are our medium and hard levels. So we're gonna do those in the next um, thing. Yes, it is very cute music. So I enjoy it a lot. So here we go. I'm gonna go through and play and I will talk through how to actually um, play the game. Uh, it will be one of those games that will look differently in the Steam implementation than it is on the actual, uh, if you have the physical copy yourself, but it's pretty straightforward how everything goes. Uh, so we will see. My, my computer is thinking about it, about setting up everything right now. So what were you all playing on uh, Dutch's stream? Uh, curious to see what, what you all were doing over there. Um, was he doing a board game? Was he going through some video games? What was the haps over there? So on the left-hand side is my little avatar here. So I am the blue button player. And then Lula here on the right-hand side, she is the orange button player. So what our goal is, this version of looks trippy. I was playing video game Immortal Phoenix Rising. Immortals Phoenix Rising. Oh, cool. I have not played that one. Um, is that on Switch or is it on Steam? Uh, I know there's so many games now that I've converted to, you can stream them from your Switch, which I think is really cool. I personally don't have a Switch, um, but it's really cool to see that a lot more like board game Twitch people are now switching over to do both kind of combos of video games and board games. So that's really, really cool. Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox. Oh yeah, okay, so it's on multiple platforms. That's pretty cool. Yes, so in this game for Patrick, we are trying to build out our quilt here. And so on the right hand side, you will see my actual blank canvas basically. So I'm gonna be sewing in different patches on the quilt. And what's going to happen is there is a, a different row of different patch tiles that are gonna be laid out in front of you on a turn. And in the actual game, you will have them kind of spread out in a circular pattern on your table. And there's a little pawn. This pawn over here on the left-hand side will indicate uh, the placement of the patches that you can take from. So you can take the any of the three patches in front of that little pawn. So the way it works is you have patches that will show you the different sizes and then there's information on the patch itself that will tell you two different things. It will tell you the cost, which is this button, button a number here. So this one would cost me eight buttons. And then at the bottom, it counts for how many movement on the player board that I will be moving. So that indicates about the second board here, the left-hand side board. That will be moving how many spaces on this board because that's kind of our timer for this game. Patchwork is normally just a two-player game. So you will be playing a series of turns based upon how far your little tokens move along this track here. So the timer will expire once the first player receives uh, the center, gets into the center first, and then the secondary player will keep playing until they finish as well. So that is our game timer. So that indicates 
the little hourglass symbols that you see on these patches that will indicate how many spaces you will be moving on this tracker. The way it works is the player will go first, which is myself, will take their first turn and move along the track. Then whoever is in the back will take their turn. If they manage to not pass over the player in front of them, they will take an additional turn. So it is kind of similar to other games like Takedo or something, where if you're in the back, you can take advantage of having multiple turns. So that is kind of a little bit of a strategy when you're playing this game. If you see it, that you can do multiple turns based upon minimal movement along the tracker, that might be a good way to go. Uh, other information that you'll see here on the, um, on the kind of timer track, if you will, are these button symbols. And these button symbols indicate what is called a currency redemption. So as you're building your quilt, you will see some of these patches here have buttons on them. Those are currency that you will accumulate once you cross over one of these button spaces on that tracker. So another goal to try to do is to get as many patches as you can with buttons on them. So that way, when you do pass over these button currency redemption spaces, you will be able to redeem those buttons and gain more currency. Uh, the other symbol that you will see are these dark squares. These are patches. Those pertain to just a single square area on your quilt that you will, once you pass over that, you will be able to fill in a one patch square. Uh, anywhere on your quilt space. So that is basically how the turns will go. If you cannot purchase any of the three tiles in front of you, and you can see here that the currency, uh, the price for each of these is eight, 10, and seven respectively. If you cannot choose any of them, what's going to happen is you will choose the pass option. And pass means that you will so one space ahead of the player in front of you and count how many spaces it took you to get there. So unfortunately for myself, I have to pass. I'm gonna slide my button over to the pass area. And since they were currently behind me, I only move ahead of them one space. So I only received one button for that. If you have to pass in future turns, you will again jump that many spaces so you're one space ahead of your opponent and then you will get buttons equivalent to the number of spaces it took you to get to that point. And so it looks like here again, Lula could not purchase anything either. She also just had five buttons. So she jumped ahead of me and received two buttons. So now her currency is at seven, my currency is at six, but again, these patches do not move because none of them have been purchased yet. Once a patch gets purchased, the pawn token will move to that empty space and push further along the, the row of patch tiles that you can play. So again, I will need to pass, this is quite a, a lovely start to this game and I jumped two spaces, so I received two additional buttons in my currency. So now Lula is choosing to play that tile with the red tile there, and that concludes her turn. So now I have a choice. I have these three tiles in front of me that I can purchase. Now in this game, which is really nice, is that it kind of gives a little glow on the, on the, around the perimeters of these tiles so you can see which tiles are available for you to purchase. So it's telling me that I cannot purchase this long L because it's worth 10 buttons and I don't have 10. I only have eight. So these other two tiles are what I have available to me. So I am actually going to choose this letter C piece and I'm going to, what happens in the game is you click and drag towards your empty tile. Now you have some options here. So on the options, what's gonna happen is you can rotate them. You can do 
counterclockwise, you can rotate them clockwise. This button over here means you can mirror the tile so you can flip it over. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to see up here, put it up here in the upper corner. And then another point of information you can see is all of these, all of these tiles in white indicate what is coming up available. So what tile shapes are available for you to play with. So I can kind of see there are some that might be able to fit in this small little area on my patch, on my quilt, I should say. So once I figure out placement where I want this tile to go, I will click this green button and it will sew it onto my quilt. And that is my turn. So I pay the cost, which is only one button. I jump two spaces ahead and now it is Lula's turn. So she did not have enough currency to buy anything. So she chose to pass. So she jumped over me and got two buttons into her bank. Now it is my turn. Okay, so I've got some options here. I've got this little one, which costs three, this H piece, which is two, but it moves me three points. Or I have this long T, which gives me, um, it's only one, but it gives me a button currency, which is nice. That That's a good way for me to start building up some stuff. So I am gonna do that and move it here and see about rotating it. Let's see what happens if I put it here. Yeah, I think this is okay if I do that here. Uh, looking ahead, there are some longer pieces coming up that I could do. So I think I'm going to keep it there. You don't have to place tiles adjacent to tiles that you've currently played. You can place it anywhere on your quilt, um, but it just kind of helps when you have things closer to one another so you can kind of see what's happening there. So. Okay, she currently has just a couple things going on over there. And if anyone has any questions while we're playing this, please feel free to pop it in the chat. Um, I am more than happy to answer questions. I have played this enough times to um, feel, be comfortable to answer questions while I'm playing, so. All right, uh, this one is nice. It will give me, oh, I can get a currency redemption because if I look here, if I move two spots, I will cross over this button area and get my currency redemption. So that's pretty nice. And I will also be able to grab more from uh, the bank because if I place one of these in, um, so I know this counts as six, but if I cross over, I will get three back. This one will only cost me four, and I only move two spaces. So let's see, if I move five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, I won't get another currency redemption yet. So, you know, I think I'm gonna do this one here. I'm going to actually, mirror it, rotate it counterclockwise, and drag it up here. So there we go, and commit to that there. Alrighty, so now I get my currency redemption, and it gives me two, two buttons back. And now it's Lula's turn. She purchased that kind of funky tile. I don't know why she's leaving such a big gap like that. Um, but she did. And it is her turn again, because even if we land on the same space, whoever's token is on top is technically seen as the player in the back, so they get another turn. All right, so now I've got these two options for myself. Uh, this is covering, this will give me a lot of space. Will I have enough? One, two, three, four, five. I won't get another currency redemption on this turn if I did the five. If I did the three, um, if I did three, let's see. 
I would only move three and then I would get an additional turn. So I could purchase that as well. Yeah, so let us see about that. Let's see. Now the question is, where do I want to put this? Mm -hmm. Rotate this here, maybe. No, oh, maybe I do one more. Oh, other way. Okay, I'm gonna do this like here. Or up here. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, let's do those. And then it only costs me two, and I move two spaces, and it is my turn again because I am in the back. So now I can purchase this one as well. And I will rotate that here and pop it right there, my friends. So we'll commit to that. And that only cost me one, but I move five and get my currency redemption. So I get four buttons from the bank. All right, what's Lula doing? She is building all kinds of weird stuff. Okay, um, I like how she has a little mushroom hat. <laughs> Pretty cute. All right, now it's my go again. We are getting close. Uh, might be a few more turns until we get this first patch here. So I think, oh, that's only gonna be five for myself. Uh, And that will move me only three spaces. One, two, three. So I will not get a currency exchange yet. Reminds me of Toad. Yes, it does. Okay. Or um, uh, Toadette, right, John? Reminds you of Toadette. Um, yeah. I think hers was. I think hers was pink. I think she had a little pink uh, toad hat. Okay. So I'm gonna do this. Ooh, do I do that here? Let's see what's coming up. Uh, yeah, I think I could do that here. Or do I want to rotate it and put it here? That'll kind of leave me more options, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's let's do this. Uh, uh, no, nope, I'm going, I'm going with my second decision. Okay, I'm going up here. Okay, cool. I think I also like this game because it gives me the feeling of, of quilting and I'm not a quilter by any means. I know how to sew buttons on things. Um, so this kind of like, it does not, it does not equate, equate you know, if, if you would ask a quilter, it would not equate to actual quilting, I guess. Um, but I'm hoping that like the mechanics of, of, you know, placing a patch and rotating it and all that kind of stuff, that that's actually a thing. Um, I would love to make a quilt someday. That's really cool, John. I, I encourage you to do that. Um, do you know how, do you know how to like sew and do all that kind of quilting and things like that. Um, oh, I have no buttons, so I have to pass, but it's okay because I will get a button redemption, currency redemption here. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I just see so many people working on like projects and things and they can just make such beautiful quilts and I like, I just, don't have that talent. I frequently given brain space to make a patchwork game quilt. Ah, oh, that would be awesome to you if you could do that. I know how to sew a bit. That's cool, John. I'm really, I hope you could. Dastardly Cupcake. I need a lot of band-aids at the ready. Yes. How are you, Cupcake? How's it going? Uh, how has your week been? Good to see you on here. Um, okay. Do I spend, oh, do I spend, oh, they took the patch. Lula took the patch. 
So, so another thing too, is you can actually look at their quilts. You can click on this little icon here and you can see what their quilt looks like. So she did, she took that patch. Uh, I'm great, thanks, busy work week, but thankfully it's the weekend. Oh yes, yes. So you're over, I believe you said you're over in the UK, if I'm not mistaken, Cupcake. Um, and apologies if you don't want me to call you Cupcake. I think it's just, I was just relating from when we played um, Among Us. Um, so correct me if you would like me to call you by a different name. Okay, um, let's see, four, four and two. So that means I only move, oh, I can get double, I can do double movement. Okay, but let's do, let us do this, shall we? Yes, let us do this. Cupcake is fine. Okay, cool. Cupcake it is then. All right, so that's only two for myself. So I get to go again. What are my options now? Ooh, I've got a T space. T, do I get, do I, should I take the T space just for you, T? Just for you, T. Do I do the small T or do I do the big capital T? One does not allow me to move as many spaces, but it costs the same. I know, if you're in chat, you have to take the T. Uh, I know, so I'm thinking All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's see. Which one covers more spaces? Well, I think it's six of one. I think it's, I think they both technically cover the same amount of space. Yeah, it looks like three, four, five. This is three across, four, five. Yeah, so it's the same. It's the same. Which one is most efficient for me right now? Why are you asking me all these questions, T? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, I would probably say the longer one. I would probably say this one. I can probably put it. Uh, considering all the long ones, think of our booths on space usage. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, he and I work for convention, work at conventions together. And so their brain space and my brain space are often collaborating on booth layouts. So that's fun. Oh, but there's a double, there's a double. Okay, yes. I think I'm gonna do that because maybe I'll hope for this two by one coming up here in a sec. All right. But you know, online conventions are gonna be more of a thing this year you know, pandemic and such. Um, but we can still have that brain space and do layouts and things. So that is still possible. What is she doing? Okay. Oh, she got the other patch. Darn you. Darn you. Okay. Okay. Well, there we go. You took the other patch from me. So... I am going to take two turns. So I'm gonna do this first. Oh no, it's a three by one. Oh snap. Why did I think that was a two by one? Uh, uh, can I undo this? Oh, can I undo? Oh, fiddlesticks. All right, well, that's fine. I'll just take an additional turn. That's fine. All right, all right. It's all good, it's all good. Don't panic. There we go, there's the two by one. That's gonna go right there. Cool, cool, cool. So, oh, what are you? Wow, that's a lot of money for that. Okay. Oh, she's getting all the patches though, friends. She's getting all the patches here. Thank you for everybody that's um, followed and everything. 
I appreciate you. I'm still trying to figure out um, all of my Moobot settings and how to get cool little emotes. I'm looking at you, John, if you're still here. I like your, not, not emotes, apologies. The, the little gifts that you make for when somebody subscribes and stuff. Like, you know, having, what is it? Is it Keanu like blows you kisses or something? Or is that someone else's stream? Or you have, oh, I forgot who it is, but you've got, you've got some funny ones, friend. So um, I might be looking at you to, to help me with that once I get more, more followers and things. And T, of course, but you know, T's, T has so many hats on at all times. Not saying that you don't, John, but I, but I know that you're more active on Twitch at the moment than T is. So I will commit to that. Tea's gonna tea, yeah. Yep. Okie doke. Ooh, button redemption. Okay. Yeah, I lurk. <laughs> this is your co working space, yes. Um, speaking of co working space, Ruel actually has designated some of his streams to do like, actual co working, like whole just put on music and run like a slideshow. You're my fifth stream today. Oh, thanks T. I'm glad I'm in your top five. Um, but he did like a co-working space where he just turns on some tunes and like every, I think it's like 25 minutes, he um, just checks in with everybody and sees how everybody's doing. But the intention is for us to just kind of have that um, virtual co-working space and it was really really neat uh he's my fave right now for that reason yes so i encourage everyone um if you haven't checked out ruel gaviola's uh twitch um i encourage you he is a wonderful human being as all of you are um but he has been has been doing a lot of uh, co-working spaces in the last like week or so. And it's been really cool, um, really helpful for a lot of folks. So do I want, I don't know if I want this H piece though. Do I want this H piece? I think I'm gonna choose to pass. Yeah, I think I'm gonna choose to pass. I don't want that H piece. It just wasn't conducive to where everything was for me. She can have it have it right now okay what do I get so I've got a nice little square um that one's okay that one's okay oh where is this one two three four oh cool I can get is that enough here yes that is enough very cool uh there we are Yes, I will do that. And that will give me a patch to fill in and my currency redemption. And I passed over a patch space, so I'm gonna fill that in. But ow, just like that. Cool. Oh, she's got 14. Wow, she's got 14 in her redemption thoughts. Okay, what do I got? Friends, what do I got? One, two, three, four, five. Can I get five? Oh, none of these will give me five. Okay, uh, well, I can do this. Sure, I'll take that and rotate it. There we are. So that little bonus thing that you saw pop up for me is a seven by seven completely filled square patch on of, of 
patch is on your quilt, you get an additional bonus. And I believe it's seven points. It's just straight seven points. So that's what the little token was that popped up for me. All right, we're getting close. So Lula has made it to the center. So I get a couple more turns, depending on how many spaces on those tiles I get. So we're getting close to the end here, friends, on this. So I need to cover as many spaces as possible. I'm gonna do this here. Cover this one. See what I can cover. And what is coming up for me? What is covering up for me? And I'll do this. And that cost me seven and I only moved one spot. So I get to take another turn. I've got this long L shape, which is great. And we'll do that here. I will mirror it and rotate it and slide over here. There we are. That cost me a whopping 10, but I get one more turn. And unfortunately, I can't do anything because I spent almost all of my buttons. So on this last turn, I have to pass and I'm just going to jump over, get a redemption, and we're going to count them up. So Lula was the victor here, even though I got the seven by seven bonus. Uh, 15 buttons that I had left over. For every for every um, square that you don't cover, it's minus two. So I got minus 10, unfortunately, with my seven by seven. But she had 38 buttons left over in her bank and she had 12 spots. So even though I was playing on easy mode, I still lost. Um, but that's okay. So we'll show we'll show the blankets. You can see the final scores there. Uh, I think mine looks more complete, as you can see. Um, Lula's is kind of all over the place, but she had a lot of good buttons going for her button redemption there. So that is patchwork. Uh, and again, I'm going to be playing this and uh, Cottage Garden more uh, for the next couple weeks and doing the um, kind of a Uwe Rosenberg series for the next few weeks. So let me hop over to stop screen sharing for a second while I pull up Cottage Garden. If anyone has any thoughts or questions about that game, let me know. But currently I am 0 for 1 against the AI. <laughs> oh, fun times though. Fun times. Now Cottage Garden will look, will look have similar mechanics, but there's a little, there's more to it. So I'm excited to play this as well. Let's go for some beautiful graphics here. Um, yeah, so what's everybody looking forward to for the weekend? What is everybody looking forward to for this weekend? All right, John, good to see you, my friend. Take care, have a lovely weekend. Um, I'll probably be seeing you probably online sometime. When do you stream next, my friend? When When is your next stream? Relaxing with the doggo. Oh, Cupcake, that sounds awesome. Tomorrow you're streaming with Lorena. Okay, what are you all streaming tomorrow? What are you all streaming tomorrow? I'll go ahead and share screen here.
playing cribbage and quirky circuits. Ah, oh, that's cool. That is cool. All right. Can you all, how is the audio sounding on this one here? Uh, let me go ahead and see about the audio settings. How that sounds all right. Cool. Enjoy the rest of your day, John. Thanks again. Alrighty, friends, how does this audio sound? Does it sound okay for everybody? Uh, we're going to be playing against is it Milu, you think? Or Milo? I'm gonna say Milu. It is a little high. Okay. All right. How about now? It's hard to tell when I'm streaming it uh, versus what you all hear. <laughs> One more email, then I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, One email more. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to roll with that for this audio. So let us play Cottage Garden. All right, so in this game, what you are doing is you are planting lovely flowers into your garden beds. Each player will have two garden beds that they're working at. This game plays up to four players, I believe. I think it's a four player game. Uh, and what's going to happen is you are going to take a garden tile that is here on the left hand side that's highlighted and place it into one of two, or of two garden beds that you see. You got one here on the left and one on the right hand side and you'll see some stuff on each of your garden beds. You've got little flower pots, which are these orange circles here and you've got cloches, glass cloches. Uh, think Everybody's like, what in the world is a cloche? Well, think about the, they're the glass containers that you put over plants to kind of give that greenhouse effect. So you might have seen them in like nurseries and, and things of that nature, but they are called cloches. I never knew what they were called. Um, so you have these cloches and those two elements are the scoring points for the game. What's going to happen in this game, you are going to plant flower beds around these items, around the pots and the cloches. And then once you complete one garden bed, you will pause the, the game will pause and you will score those points. You score points on the pots and the cloches and they will be moving up a score tracker and I will show you what the score tracker looks like once we get to that point because it does not have it visually present yet. So you score, you will score based upon those uh, pots and cloches. So you're trying to not cover any of those spots if you can help it. So you're trying to get some flower tiles that will go around them so you can cover up all the blank spots and only score the pots and the cloches there. How the turns work is each, each uh, column and row will determine which player goes in that round. So right now I have this first column. I am first player and then it will be player two, which I will then I will go and then Milo will go. What happens in a three and four player game is that it will go consecutively first player, second player, third player, and then it will go around the garden beds, uh, excuse me, around the flower bed tiles here. It will go in a clockwise direction. So we will do all the columns and then we will start on this top row and pick from the flower bed tiles that are available on the top row. Flower tiles get replaced if there is only one tile in that row or column, 
or if there are zero tiles in that row or column and they will get replaced. There are, in the actual game, you will have a little pathway with a with a wheelbarrow that indicates where the flower bed tiles will be coming into play. So similarly, like in Patchwork with the little wooden pond, this in Cottage Garden, you have a wheelbarrow to indicate where the tiles are going to be placed. And you place them, when you place them back into the the flower bed kind of choosing area, you place them in order from the closest to where the marker is, which is which is determined by an actual die itself. Um, they are called the gardener. This green arrow is, is considered the gardener. So you would refill those tiles, starting from the gardener space, starting from the closest tile to the wheelbarrow and working your way out and building up flower bed um, row or column on that turn. So we will go through and each decide to pick one. Once there is a full rotation around the garden bed, that will trigger the second round. So we will be playing a total of six rounds for the game. Um, I believe it's six rounds for a two player. Um, or is it? Yes, because I think it's less for more players. Uh, so once we reach that sixth round, if you have any flower beds of, that you're still working on, those flower beds will still be in play unless you have less than three flower tiles uh, planted in that flower bed. But we'll get to that once we come to um, those in that later round. So to determine who is, goes first, you have this little flower here that's kind of spinning to kind of tell you, hey, it's my turn or whoever's turn it is. The other options that you have on a turn is you grab one of these flower bed tiles, place them into one of your garden beds, and then you can choose to place a kitty token, which is these kitties down here at the bottom. Um, and each one of us has currently two kitties, hence the kitties in the middle of our player boards. We can choose to place a kitty on a one square space as an additional um, action for your turn. So you can place a tile and then place a kitty um, as two parts of your turn. If you do not want to take any of these tiles here, you can choose to just place a pot instead, and it is a one square that will just fill in on anywhere on your player board, and that will be your turn. So that is kind of another option to pass. Once someone reaches a current threshold on their point score tracker, which you will see once we get to playing um, and scoring our uh, pots and our cloches, you will, the first person to get 20 points on one or the other will receive these beehive bonuses. The first person to do so will get the two beehive points, which is worth two points at the end of the game. The second person will get the one point. Uh, and there's only one beehive token per player that can, that can win. Um, so I am going to go ahead and place, and once you fill in one of your garden beds and you score it, it gets discarded and you get another garden bed. So you're always working on two garden beds simultaneously throughout the game. Um, and so the goal here is to try to gain as many token, as many uh, garden beds as you possibly can, try to finish them as quickly as possible, because that'll get you more points in the end. So that is basically it. There are going to be a few more rules as you see things out uh, when they come out to play. But for now, I am going to take my turn and then we will kind of explain as I go along. So I've got quite a lot of pots a couple of cloches here. There's quite a lot of pots over here. I've got my options. I've done two emails. I'm doing a third. Wow. 
I'm earning your weekend. Yes, you are, T. You are definitely earning your weekend. I thought you said you're only going to do one. I thought you said you were only going to do one more email. You are such a productive person. I commend you, T. Okay. So I think I'm going to grab this tote pile because it has a lot of space to cover. And see on the bottom here, you still have the same options to rotate and mirror. So I think I'm going to uh, rotate it. Rotate it here. And then let's do that like this. Okay, and then once you're done, you hit this green arrow. You're inspiring me. Oh, thanks, T. I know we don't have our, our patio co-working space at the moment, so um, I'm glad I can do this for you on this chill screen. All right, so you did the did the green check mark to indicate yes, this is where I want to place this garden bed, and then down here there's another are you sure button. I know I would like it too, T. I would like to have my my space with you as well. So okay, so they got their oh they decided to cover up one of their pots, so you can kind of see. I look at their board. Oh, here we go. There's a teaching moment. Okay. So the score tracker, I've only played this one other time on Steam. I own the game. I've played this several times. So I did not know you can have this uh, point score. So let me continue on with the rules explainings. And uh, you can see what I was talking about with the point scoring. So when you complete a garden bed and you cover it with all your tiles and things and you score your pots and your cloches, you have these two trackers here on your player board. And below for each section, you have three point score markers. Those indicate the number of points you will score at the end of the game. And you can move those trackers in any order that you wish. Can, the only caveat is you cannot split points between markers on a turn. So if you're scoring, let's say I had five pots and four cloches, I can only move one of my orange tokens the whole five points. I can't divide it two and three or four and one. I have to move it the complete five points. And the same thing with the cloches. I would have to move it a complete four points. So, and as you see here on the two different sides, there are the tracker for the pots goes one through 15. The tracker for the cloches goes two through 14, but it skips for double numbers. You still move your tokens one for one on those spaces, um, but you will just get the different points based upon where those tokens land at the end of the game. Well, you, as you see kind of in the halfway, a little bit less than halfway point on your point score uh, trackers, you see these little mice tokens. Mice, are, as you probably can tell on this implementation, are infest your garden, hence you need some kitties to uh, eradicate them, if you will. So once you pass over one of these mouse spaces, you will get a kitty token back into your tableau to use on a future turn. The max kitty tokens you can have with you is two. So if you end up crossing over one of these mouse lines and you get a kitty uh, and you must play, and you have already two in your tableau, you must play that third one immediately. Uh, so be mindful of that. Uh, also, once you get all three tokens of a color somewhere on your score tracker, you will receive a pot token to place into one of your spaces on your garden beds that you have to play immediately. You can't save it for later. So that's what these are. And again, like with the beehives, what I was explaining, first player to get one of their tokens, the 20 point space, either pots or cloches, will get the beehive. 
Um, the other will get the secondary beehive, which is worth one point. So the first player gets the two beehive, which is two points at the end of the game. Second player gets the one point. So there you go. So that's all the uh, point scorings here. So that's another strategy to keep in mind too, is that there's multiple tokens for each point value uh, for the pots and for the cloches. So keep that in mind as you're moving them up and up the point tracker, the faster you do that and the faster you get some of those tokens out actually onto a scoring spot, the quicker you can get more pots and the quicker you can get kitty tokens and all of that fun stuff. So there's a lot of bonuses to keep in mind for that. Okay, so now here is my column that I can pick from. And like I said, you can work simultaneously on these um, garden beds. You don't have to work one at a time. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one over here and rotate it and slide it over. So it's not covering any of my pots. It has a nice little border around these pots. I'm gonna commit and say yes. And then yes, that is the end of my turn. Right now, I could place a kitty token if I wanted to. That's what this kind of secondary arrow, are you sure moment is. It's telling me, do you want to end your turn completely right now or would you like to place a kitty token? I'm going to wait to place my kitty token. I think I'm okay for now. And we'll move on to Mailu. Mailu took that cloche. Uh, and you can see, can I see on their... Oh, it's a cute little dog. Okay. Uh, I wonder. I wish we could see their their board. Um, what they decided to do, but anyway. So now we are on the upper rows, and there are still three tiles available. So that is still an okay set of tiles to choose from. Um, let's see want to complete a lot of things quickly. So I'm going to take this big piece and place it there. Cover up a lot more spaces here. And be okay with that. So, all right, Milu chose to do that. Oh, I've got a lot of options now on this area here. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take this long piece and place it there. Yeah, this long stretch of flowers. And again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, pop them in the chat. Uh, if you're interested in seeing anything else that I am doing, I am on the socials. You can check me out. Um, all of my handles and things like that are in the chat. Uh, yes, yeah, so I stream Wednesdays and Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, 11 p.m. GMT. I do mostly tabletop stuff on Wednesdays usually a lot of playthroughs and things, interactions with the chat. And then Fridays for Festive Fridays are when I do a lot of uh, digital stuff. So thank you all for being here. And if you have any questions about this game or any uh, suggestions as to like, why did you place that tile there? And you know, how can I get this to play for myself? Um, can I play this with my friends online? All that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I am total a total multitasker, so I can I can play this and talk to y'all at the same time. So, okey doke. Um, I'm getting pretty close to finishing one of these, so I'm gonna take. Look, it's another tea piece for you, tea. Took a tea piece for you. Uh. Yep, there we go. And yeah. Have a 
have they finished? They have not finished yet. So here we go, another teachable moment for y'all. So this is currently my two options that I have. However, I could take this little L piece and put it over here if I wanted to, or I can try to finish this first garden bed and score some points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose to take a pot instead, place it there, say okie doke, and then I'm gonna take a kitty to fill in this final spot. Meow and say okie doke. And now I am going to score these pots and cloches. So in the physical game, what's going to happen is you decide as the player what order you can put back the tiles. So right now, this is the order that you see them that is going to come out for future turns. Uh, and so this will go at the end, the tiles will go at the end of that wheelbarrow trail. So uh, you can choose, it's also kind of a strategy. You can choose to place the tiles in a certain order to kind of, you know, possibly sabotage your opponents. Uh, but I've never really seen it as being that problematic uh, because, you, because you normally have at minimum two options to choose from on the tiles. So I just randomly just pick whatever here, but that's an option, a strategy you can do in the physical game. Okay, so right now it's saying down at the bottom of my player board, it's kind of a little bit tiny to see, but I have five um, orange pot points and two of the blue cloche points. So, and it's telling me which token do I want to use, want to move first doesn't matter at this point because they are all at zero so i'm just going to choose the first one and it's going to move that to the five and then the second one i'm going to move also the same so i moved two points so i moved five points here and two spots so two five spaces on the orange pot side and two spaces on the blue cloche side so that's where my points are so currently i have a total of nine points and now this is my new garden bed. Uh, and that will conclude my turn. Email done. Yay, T. Good job. Happy weekend, friend. Happy weekend. Thank you for sticking around. But I totally understand if you have to go take a screen break. Yeah, I figured off the screen. Hearts to you, say hi to all in your household. Give hugs, hugs and pets, hugs and pets. Okie doke, here are my options for this one. I see this one doesn't seem like I can finish based upon these tiles and it wouldn't be, I only have one kitty left. So even if I put a kitty here, I would still have to wait until this is next. We should play this later. I like this game. Bye. Yes, I am online, T. Feel free if you want to play this later online. Or anyone, if you would like to um, play with me later online. Yeah. Okie doke. Uh, I think I'm going to do this here. The watering can. No kitties yet. Okay. Maya Lou, are you going to finish up anytime soon? Does not look like it. Okay. So, I only have a couple options now, friends, for this one. Uh, again, these pieces are not very helpful for this second garden bed for me. So, I'm going to have to see what I can do here on this first garden bed. Uh, that, I might have to take that long Z. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this long Z. I'm going to flip it though. Liberty give it. And put that there. 
Yeah, put it there. Okie doke. Joke. Now, what do I got? What do I got here, friends? I got this L piece. Or this L piece, friends. Ooh, the stairs. If I took the stairs, though, I would be covering a lot of stuff. So, I think I just have to do one of these L pieces. I'm just going to have to do that there. Yeah and spend a couple turns taking a kitty and a pot. But that is all right. Wow, they're using up all their kitties to finish. Okie doke, so they finally got their first garden bed completed. They've got themselves 13 points there. All right. Again, these are not great tiles, so I'm going to choose to put a pot there. I'm going to wait to do my kitty until my next turn. Uh, yeah, I'll just do that. There we are. So now, is this? I think this is a three tile. Not two tile. So I am going to do another pot here and kitty. Oh, I have to commit the pot first. <laughs> That's right. I have to commit the pot first, then place my kitty. Yep. So that completes my second garden bed. Which order do I throw these at? It really doesn't matter, I don't think. Okay, so now I've got eight and one to move. So if I decide to use token number one, I will move it eight spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would give me closer to reaching the 20 points. Or I could choose to use the second tile and move all the way up to eight. Either way, I will get a kitty back which is be great. And then the other one, I would just get one. So I think what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna take the second. And then here, I'm just going to move also number two there. So I got a kitty back. So kitty is in my bank now. You can see on your player board, the little kitty, there's a number down at the bottom that shows the uh, number of kitty tiles that you have, kitty tokens that you have. So, all right, what's my Lou gonna do here? So now I have a new, new garden bed to work with. So I've got this giant letter F or this one. I can, I can use that F. I see a perfect spot for it actually, friends. F for friends. Friends and fun and festive Fridays. That's a lot of Fs. Uh, Okie doke. Yeah, don't know you to use any kitties yet. Uh, yeah, that will be that. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so. I've got a nice little tea. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, what do I do with these? We are going to be refilling some stuff. I want to do that one. Oh, another interesting thing to note when you're playing this game. On the actual game itself, you have this player board. You have this player board here with all the flower bed tiles on it. And if you have multiple options in your row or your column that you have to choose from, 
they give you a nice large parasol token that you can place in that spot instead while you're visually seeing where on your garden bed you can place something. So uh, it's one thing I try to get people to remember when they're playing the actual game is use the parasol because there's so many times when there's a lot of times going on and there's random empty spots on the flower bed and a selection area and someone grabs a tile and they're like flipping it and manipulating it and they're like oh I don't remember where in the row or the column it was so that's where the parasol comes in unfortunately in this game they don't have it there they just have it highlighted nicely so that's like these are the only three options that you have um but I like to point that out in the physical game that you can actually see what things look like. So like here, I can kind of drag this over and go, well, that's gonna cover that. That's not great. You know, can I, what can I do with these here, you know? So um, yeah, it's a nice little way to kind of see stuff in that sense. Oh, uh, all right. What am I going to choose? What shall I choose? I could. I'm actually going to do this one here and mirror it and rotate it like this and move it there. Nice little pond, nice little garden pond there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So now, my loose turn. They're covering up their pot spaces. Not very wise. All right. So I've got that piece and I've got that piece. halfway through we haven't made a full rotation yet so we've got some time uh, neither of these tiles is really great for me I mean I guess I can do this one yeah but yeah why not either of those, so I need to place a pot instead. I won't place my kitty just yet. I'll wait till the next turn so I can do that. Oh, it looks like Mylou has completed another garden bed. How many points are they getting there? They're at 23. I am currently at 19. can't do anything with those so I'm going to place a pot, commit, and place my kitty. And now we shall score. Uh, doing this, doing this. So I have six to place for my pots and two for my cloches. And on your scoring, you can have tokens on the same point space. They can occupy the same point space. They will just um, be independently on their scores. So if I had two tokens on the number five space, each of them would score me five points at the end of the game. So I have six now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oof, so close. If I move this one out, I can place a pot Three. So I think I am going to move this one 
And then on my cloche, I am going to do that. So I get here. So now I currently have two pots that I can play. Three here because I was able to get all three of my scoring tokens off of the zero spot. So there we go. That definitely helped with that second garden bed for myself. That was definitely really helpful. So now I can complete this one or I can choose to take one of these tiles here. But you know what? They're getting close. So, oh, but I don't have any kitties yet. So I don't have any kitties to score, finish off this. Okay. So I think I am going to take these stairs here. Um, lever that, rotate it, slide that over here and do that there. Yes, so I need to get some more kitties, but you know, can I complete anything? I could do that one. Yeah, I could do this here. It. Yeah, let me see. If I do that, that seems all right. Eventually, I'm going to have to just put um, pot down just so I can finish it. Uh, but this is a nice piece here, so I will take this piece here and rotate it and slide it in that area. So yeah, for everyone that's just joining me, I am playing Cottage Garden on Steam. Uh, it's Uwe Rosenberg tile placement game. Earlier, I just played Patchwork on Steam and lost by the AI, the easy AI, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'm Jess, and I'm really glad that you all are joining me for this festive Friday. Um, yeah, so let's see. let me know in chat how you all are doing, what you're up to today. Do you have any fun plans for the weekend? You've got to work on the weekend. Sometimes that happens. Uh, so yeah, let me know what's what's going on in your neck of the woods. Okay, so I currently have four and two. So I can, I think I'm gonna move my number one token up and then I have two spaces. So I will move my, also my number one there. So I've got two kitty tokens back. They eradicated some mice from my garden bed, so now I've got some space. Oh, cool. So this tile here, friends, is a little one square cloche. It will score me points. It does count as a cloche on your garden bed, so I will definitely take that. And then to complete it, I will throw a kitty at it or gently place the kitty in my garden bed. <laughs> Although, you know, cats tend to land on their feet anyway. So I think they wouldn't mind if they got thrown into a garden. I know my cat probably wouldn't mind at all. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, goodness me, what are they at? They're not close. Okay. Uh, Three, four, five, six. I will do that one. And then I have three. I will move that there. OK. 
Okay, so I got a kitty back. Cloche, yes. <laughs> Hello, Gus. Thanks for joining. Uh, oh, they finished one as well. They got they got all of their tokens out on their point tracker, so they got to place some pots for free. So now I've got some things. I've got some choices here, friends. This one seems to cover a lot of ground. And this one. Uh, or that one. But this one is kind of interesting because it's kind of an odd shape piece. And if I threw that here, cover a lot of ground. So yeah, I will do that. You will see the same, you know, tiles and things coming out. So uh, I haven't gotten down to that kind of strategy yet where, you know, you, you can plan so far ahead that I think you can predict where things are going. Um, so yeah. Okay. Could do this long L shape here. Oh, that will cover that. Or I can do that here and rotate it. Or do I rotate it once more and place it here? Hmm, choices, choices, choices. Nah, I'm gonna go with my first, my first inclination. Do that, there. Okie doke. I always got some new garden beds to work with. I have some options now. A little L. Little L's not bad. But this kind of longer Z is nice too. I'm gonna slide that over here. Here, here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, this, this, the music, the background music is just so lovely and pleasant too to play. Um, I feel like I could teach this game uh, to any level of gamer, really. And I think once they overall can kind of see the mechanics and things, I think they would really enjoy playing it once like kind of strategy comes into play. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like as complex. I think just the little nuances of, you know, scoring pots and cloches and all that kind of stuff. but. Basically, fitting tiles into a grid and making them fit without covering up certain spaces uh, can seem pretty straightforward. So, yeah, I think I think I really enjoy playing this. And this implementation on Steam seems to work really well. I think too, it kind of helps. Um, expedite some of the like the game setup and things of that nature but it does still give you the freedom to add uh your own points and score them in that way if you wanted to um so i really like i really like how it does that that just so happened to work that i had that fitting there perfectly Okay, so now I've got some fun options again. Got some fun options again. I did, I couldn't do the stairs though because it will cover up some things for me. 
I want to cover up things. Um, perhaps I can do the water can. anyone has questions on how to play oh that's silly why did they do that they just covered up three scoring pots hmm. if anyone has questions about this game or are curious to um, want to play it in the future let me know I can't do anything with either of those tiles so I've got to place a pot that is quite all right. I don't want to place a kitty yet. Uh, there's still quite a few spaces on both of my garden beds that I can't, I don't want to cover up. See, now I think they're just sabotaging themselves. They're just throwing things. Which is quite odd for an, for an AI to do. Uh, this here. Done. And I'm going to place a kitty. It. So now we're going to do an order of returning all of these flower tiles back. And now I've got three and three and three. So I am going to move that to cross over. And then I will do three as well. So I have got the double beehive because I got one of my tokens to the 20 point space. And that is all I can do on my turn. So yeah, there we go. Okay, I've got some new, new options here. Uh, that L piece is going to go perfectly. I kind of planned for that L shape to happen, so I'm going to keep that there. Just so happens to be the same color flowers. See, now I think they're just sabotaging it. They're just giving me the win, which is, ugh, which is problematic, I feel like. Um, oh, okay. So, we are now in round six. So what happens in round six is if you do not have at least three tiles, flower tiles, on your garden beds, it gets discarded. So because I did not have three on both of my garden bed tiles, I had to get rid of one. And now at the start of your turn, what's going to happen is you lose two points at the start of your turn if you're continuing to build um, flowers into your garden beds. Once you complete one or both of your, once you complete all of your garden beds, so currently for me, I only have one garden bed that I'm working on. Milu has two that they're working on. Once you complete your garden beds in round six, then your game ends. So game will keep going until both or all players, excuse me, when all players complete their uh, garden beds in round six, then the game will end and we will score our points. So, um, but what happens is if you are still working on garden beds for continuing turn, you will lose two points at the start of each turn for that round. So a strategy to think about is to try to build up as many points, but then also be mindful as you're going from round five into round six, do I have enough tiles to work on for both um, garden beds to remain in round six, or do I just try to throw all of my tiles just on one and then sacrifice one of the other ones? And so what happened with me is I had to sacrifice one of them because I didn't have enough tiles on that garden bed to complete it. So 
now it's telling me which points do I want to lose two points from. So I'm just going to do this one here. Just lose two points, and then I will start my turn. Well, now it seems these are my two options I have got. I only have space for two here, so I can't place any of these tiles. So I will need to place a pot instead and place a kitty to complete it. So I don't think I will get any one tile uh, tokens to place. Now it'll allow me to score. I will put these back onto the wheelbarrow trail. And now I have three points to move for the pots and four points to move for my lotions. So I'm gonna move that here. And for my lotions, I'm gonna do that. We'll get 20 points again for that. So my game has concluded. It's news time. Have a lovely evening. Okay, Cupcake, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, have a great night and a lovely weekend. I'll probably see you on the on the Discord. <laughs> thank you. All right. So they are still, Milo's still completing theirs. They still got a couple to work with, so their turns are just gonna go, keep going, and the gardener will still rotate around the flower bed selection board. Um, but every new turn that they play, they have to lose points, unfortunately. So there they go, they finished that one. Let's see how many points they get. They reached the 20, so they got the beehive there. And now they've got one to place. And they have to do some turns here. Yeah, they can't place any of these tiles, so they're just having to place pots on their player board. So I am successful in this game. <laughs> I wonder if they didn't sabotage themselves towards the end, if it would have been the same score. I don't know. I feel like the easy mode on patchwork was a little more realistic. Yes, they played kind of obscure tiles on their quilt, so it was a little more open and kind of open-ended, but this one, it just seemed like the last two rounds, they were just sabotaging everything. Um, so there you go. So I was able to score 36 on my pot points, 38 on cloches, and I got the beehive first. So I got the two point beehive. They got 28 on their pots, 20 on their cloches, and one point on their beehive. Uh, like I said, this game plays up to four, I believe. I believe it plays up to four players. So let's see what happened. Yeah, four player game. So next time I will be playing against the medium level, uh, medium level difficulty. And uh, we'll see what that does. So that concludes my Friday stream for y'all. Let's see who is online <clears throat> that we can raid. Uh, oh, it looks like Ross is on here. Dakota's on here. Ross is playing Paradise Killer. Interesting. Yeah, let's see about that. So, alrighty, friends, I will be back on Wednesday playing some more tabletop stuff for your viewing pleasure. 
I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be playing. I have to figure that out. Possibly another print and play roll and write. Um, there was talk about me doing some fleet dice. I might be doing some fleet dice, which is one of my all time favorite roll and write games. Um, I enjoy it very, very much. So I might be doing that. Um, but we shall see. We shall see what is the haps going on for everyone. So let us see. Okie doke. I'm going to sign off a little bit early today. That's quite all right. Uh, I can grab a snack and all that kind of stuff. And I will throw you all to the lovely Ross. More games, please. Shout out to him. So let's go ahead and start that raid. And we shall see how it goes. Alrighty, friends, take care. I will see you all next week. Bye.